In the era of the set shot, Paul Arizin stood out as an innovator, perfecting a new offensive weapon, the jump shot. Playing his entire career with the Philadelphia Warriors, he was a two-time scoring champ and won an NBA title in 1956. Paul, oh, he was not the kind of guy who would take advantage of scoring opportunities in terms of quickness. He used to like to go into his style. He had nice footwork and he'd bow forward, bow forward, and then he would try and get that shot off in your, in your face. I always had the impression that he wanted to make you look bad every single time you were playing against him. He just uh, had a nice mid-range shot and he never hurried. Never hurry. Waited until you got there and you thought you were in position to defend him. And then he would somehow get off that really quick and easy uh, jump shot. Paul Arison sets and shoots. The ball switches the net. I played with some great basketball players. Maybe the greatest basketball player I ever played with was uh, Paul Arison, who played with the Philadelphia Warriors. He was not recruited out of high school to play at Villanova. They found him playing in an industrial league, and he was already in college and enrolled in Villanova and invited him out for the team, and the rest is history. Paul Arizona, a menace from any position, in there. Paul was a great jump shooter, and, uh, you know, he, he also would, he could drive, handle the ball, and drive to the basket, and extremely proficient, accurate as a, as a jump shooter. He uh, probably as good as anybody. Paul Arison was a real competitor. I, uh, you know, all the years that I played against Paul, all I heard about was his asthma and how he couldn't breathe. And, but I'll tell you, he got the ball in his hands and uh, it was better than penicillin because he, uh, he, he, he'd do whatever had to, he had to do to, to, to run over you, through you, above you. And uh, he was a great competitor and uh, I really enjoyed playing against him. Paul Arizin was a 10-time NBA All-Star, and that's including interrupting his career for a couple of years to serve in the military during the Korean War. What were his contributions to the game? Well, I mean, can you imagine this rags to riches story? A guy who didn't even play high school basketball, goes to the Hall of Fame, 50 greatest players, 75 greatest players. I don't think I can recall a player like that. He got cut from his high school team as a senior, didn't bother to go out again. All of a sudden, you know, he has this great career, one of the best players of his generation of that decade. As you said, he served in the Korean War. Now, he was an all-star before he went to Korea. Came back, picked up where he left off, was an all-star again. Amazing. And how integral was he to the city of Philadelphia and to the franchise, then the Philadelphia Warriors? Well, I mean, if you go back, you know, Philadelphia had a basketball renaissance. Tom Gola, Wilt Chamberlain, and Paul Arizon. Now, Paul was born and raised in Philadelphia played at Villanova, played for the Philadelphia Warriors. And when the franchise moved to San Francisco, he says, no, 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 I'm going to retire. No, no. And then he came out of retirement to play semi-pro basketball across the river in Camden, New Jersey. So I don't think there's really anybody who, who sort of typifies Philadelphia basketball than Paul Arizon. A Philly guy through and through. And one of the first great jump shooters in NBA history. I don't think I was, by any stretch of the imagination, strictly a jump shooter. What I really wanted to do, every time I got the ball, or had the ball, I wanted to drive in and make a layup. My philosophy being, it's much easier to shoot from two or three feet away than it is for 15 or 20 feet away. Plus, when you're driving, your chances of getting fouled are much greater. And if you look at my records, I made nearly as many foul shots as I did field goals during my career.